Hey guys, there's been a lot said on um, certain YouTube videos and indeed on some forums about uh, traditional Indian martial arts. Um, and it's a complicated subject because uh, there are many different forms of Indian martial art uh, that, s that share similar roots, lineage, and um, some of them have uh, sort of, should we call it politics, or, or <laughs> likes and dislikes between them. Um, sometimes just friendly rivalry, but sometimes a bit more than that. And um, I have seen certain um, aspersions cast against Gatka. Now, Gatka is the practice of um, essentially sword and buckler fighting, uh, but using, um, using a stick, um, a short stick, so lathi is generally a long stick, but using the Gatka, which is actually the shorter stick, sword length stick, straight stick, um, usually made of rattan or sometimes other materials, um, with a buckler, okay, with a, a buckler being a small circular uh, sort of dish shaped shield held in the left hand. Um, and um, there have been some suggestions I've seen and heard, and people have told me, particularly from the sort of Shasta video um, sort of um, uh, collection of people, that Gatka is a sort of a debased or, or, or not a pure form of form of the art. Now, um, as you guys probably know, if you've watched many of my videos, I study uh, a lot of 19th century um, sources, both fencing sources, but also narrative sources, descriptions of swordplay and uh, combat from the 19th century. And of course, Britain uh, spent a lot of time in India in the 19th century. So, it's, it's interesting to then go and look at the British sources and see what they say about Indian martial arts of the time. And I should also mention, and I've mentioned in previous videos, um, that uh, there are also British accounts describing Chinese martial arts and Japanese martial arts in the 19th century as well, and indeed uh, certain African uh, martial arts and so on. Um, so it's very interesting to hear a, a British, you know, someone who's writing uh, quite clearly, essentially in modern English, their description of what a certain area's martial art and martial practice looked like um, 150 years ago, for example, or, or more in some cases. Um, and to me, this kind of cuts through some of the bullshit, some of the bullshito that you get being spoken about by modern martial arts teachers who are trying to big up their style over another style. Um, and something that I've found uh, repeatedly is that there are many uh, 19th century British accounts of uh, Indian swordplay being practiced. And um, despite the fact that these accounts are from all over India, India being a massive place, obviously, with a huge population, and even then it was the case, um, even though they're from a wide area and different cultures, different religions, Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, and so on, um, there are similarities in the descriptions of the different, uh, of the different witnesses. They describe similar features uh, across Indian swordplay, and of course similar weapons. We know that the tulwar was by far the most popular sword right the way across India, and in fact beyond India as well, into Afghanistan for example. Um, and the dal, or buckler, the small buckler, was the most popular accompaniment to the tulwar. Okay, so the sword and buckler, or tulwar and dal, were the uh, sort of typical uh, sidearms of the average man. Okay, everyone really who could uh, afford afford to buy such a thing in the local market. Um, and most, uh, most Indian people, uh, sort of above the level of farmers at least, uh, were armed. They did have a sword and buckler. So, um, now what's, what's interesting to me, and I'll put, a link, um, I'll put a link down to my forum in fact, underneath this video, is that some of these descriptive accounts are, are very detailed. Um, and uh, there's one account that is, is on my forum, which will be linked below, uh, which actually describes the specific equipment they use and the kind of ritual that they go through before sparring. But the point I'm working around to is, for the people who say that Gatka, as it's shown now, is very different from old Indian swordplay, um, that doesn't, isn't supported by the sources. The sources describe pretty much exactly what's done in, in modern Gatka. The only difference I've been able to find is that most practitioners of uh, Gatka in most of their practice, not all of their practice, seem to do most things slightly out of distance. So when they see uh, an opening where they could have scored a hit, 
usually they they don't hit the person, and they're usually and usually they're slightly too far away to hit them easily. Okay, so they they're essentially doing like a more sporting friendly version of the sparring, should we call it? Okay. But uh, in the descriptive accounts, it's clear that in little Indian villages, when they came out and had a little, uh, like a feast day, and they had some gatka practice, it seems that they did actually aim to hit each other, much like old uh, English single stick. Um, so they were using sticks instead of swords. But they did indeed uh, try to hit each other. And it also we know that sometimes the sticks were padded, which is very interesting when we're looking at training equipment and people are... Uh, talking about using sword simulators instead of swords and different types of you know blunt sword and flexible sword and padded sword and so on. Um, we know that they did use, uh, and in fact there's two examples surviving in the Royal Armouries in Leeds, they did use a type of gutka stick which had a hilt like a sword at one end and the stick itself had a sort of leather condom on it which had a padding of something like straw or hair inside. I'm not exactly sure what the material is. But so they essentially were hitting each other with padded sticks. So there's a little bit of a difference there between what they were doing as, as Gatka practice, or they just called it sword play, essentially. Um, uh, and they didn't, as far as I can tell, call it Shasta Vidya at that time. Um, but what they were doing as um, sword play practice, and what most Gatka people do now, that's the only real difference I can find. Just to finish off, I'm just going to read a British uh, soldier. Is he an officer? Yes, he's a lieutenant. Lieutenant Samuel Fisher of the 3rd Dragoons, uh, his description of uh, Indian swordplay, but what's interesting about it is that he's talking about it as if basically everybody, every kind of everybody who's likely to be reading his account, i.e. who's got some military experience or has lived in India, will know what he's talking about, uh, that Indian swordplay is widely known and everyone knows what it looks like. Um, but he goes, uh, he says, those who have witnessed the sword play of the Hindus, and he's referring basically to all Indians at this point, have been struck with the wildness of their gestures and perhaps have been inclined to un underrate the incessant shifting of their position over the field of contest. But they could not have failed to be struck with the wonderful agility displayed in every joint and limb and the dexterity with which they catch upon the extremely small buckler used in such games, games note there, a successive shower of sharp and rapidly descending blows. A little more experience would convince them that upon this constant change of gesture and positions, the success of men armed with weapons so much better calculated for defence than assault may mainly depend, especially as, depending, sorry, especially as, wearing no protection to the eyes, their position with respect to the aspect of the sun is of the utmost consequence. Okay? And this, uh, this sort of description of constantly moving and shifting around, um, and in fact several of the sources refer to the expression um, uh, um, uh, more indica, they, they kind of describe it as the Indian way of moving. Um, which is uh, with the weapon and the buckler constantly moving around the whole time with the feet and the weapons and the buckler. And uh, there are descriptions from the uh, Indian Mutiny and the Sikh Wars of, um, of British um, soldiers and officers encountering uh, a, an Indian uh, opponent um, who uh, started a sort of dance uh, out of distance, almost a bit like in European sources, a bit like going through a flourish, as we would call it. And you see these flourishes in Italian, English, Spanish and Portuguese sources. Um, so they're moving their weapons around, I suppose trying to get themselves supple and moving and into a fighting kind of uh, mindset, at the same time as impressing and threatening the opponent. Uh, and this is, this is something we see in Gakka today, you know, they start, they start off they, they do a prayer um, and then they, um, you know, they select the weapons, there's a little bit of ceremony at the beginning. And then they start essentially dancing around with the weapons. But this dancing, as we see it, actually serves a very important purpose and is described in the 19th century sources exactly. And not only being done in practice and in ceremony, but being done in war as well. Uh, constantly shifting and moving. Um, so the descriptive accounts of 19th century Indian swordplay really match up, to me, match up really, really closely with modern Gatka. Not only the way of moving and the way of using the sword and the shield, the sword and the buckler, but 
Uh, also down to the equipment as well, and the descriptions of using practice leather bucklers and you know practice sticks, and as as I mentioned, sometimes with padding on. Okay, thank you.